Hello everybody, welcome back to Out of Bodies 31 Days of October. Today I'm going to be talking about what was formerly known as the Tennessee Brewing Company. I'm going to be going into the history and some of the hauntings as well. So if you'd like to hear more about that, keep watching. So the Tennessee Brewing Company opened in 1890 and for a long time was known as the largest brewery in the South and one of the largest in the nation. It's located at 477 Tennessee Street and has been there for almost 130 years. It was a very successful company. Um, it actually did end up closing down during Prohibition and then opened back up after, um, but then closed again in 1954. After it closed, another company bought the building and used it as a scrap metal company until the 1980s. Then, unfortunately, it did stand vacant for a lot of years. Actually, up until just a few years ago, it was still vacant. So in 2015, it was actually renovated and made into apartments. So now it's actually this huge apartment complex. But what is really neat, and as you can see in the photos over here, is that when they renovated it, they kept the building, at least the front of it, exactly the way it was. And I'll show some before and after photos so you guys can see that. But I thought that was really neat. It seems like a lot of people that renovate buildings here in downtown Memphis tend to keep the structure the way it was if they can. And they just kind of renovate it and update it, which I think is really cool. I think it's actually some kind of a code out here, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to research that. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've heard anyway that there's some kind of a building code out here for these really old buildings in Memphis. You know, a lot of times the reason why they stand vacant for so long is because there's a code that they have, whoever buys it has to keep the structure looking the way it is, but just simply update it. They can't tear it down, in other words, unless it is not structurally sound. If it's structurally sound, they have to use the building. They can't tear it down. So. I, I like that rule though. I think that's a really good idea because I love history and I love old buildings and I think it's important to, to try to keep older structures still intact if possible because it is both part of history. So like I said earlier, the building stood empty, completely vacant from 1982 until 2015. So as far as the hauntings go, and I assume most of these were experienced by people while the building was vacant. I don't know that anybody ex is still experiencing anything in the apartments. I would be very interested to find out. If I ever find out of anybody who lives in those apartments or if you live in those apartments in downtown Memphis and you're watching this, I would love to ask you some questions if you've experienced anything. But I have not heard of anything as of yet, but apparently whatever spirits are or were there were pretty angry. People would complain of hearing very, very loud noises. Some people were even pinched or pushed physically by spirits. Footsteps can be heard throughout the building. Apparently some of those louder noises that were heard, I don't know exactly what they sounded like or what they were, but apparently, according to some people, they were loud enough to rattle the windows. Apparently if someone is walking up the stair, some of the stairs in there, which if you look in the pictures, you can see like the different stairwells, there's a lot of them. Um, apparently, if you're walking up those stairs and once you get to the top of the stairs or the bottom, you can hear extra footsteps. So footsteps can be heard even after the person has stopped climbing the stairs. So people seem to think that most of the spirits who inhabit the place or used to inhabit the place are spirits of those previous workers who worked in the building when it was a brewery or even when it was a scrap metal place. But there's one spirit in particular that is supposedly the ghost of a boxer because the building at one point actually hosted boxing matches. And after one of those boxing matches, a boxer actually died. So apparently the boxer had such bad injuries and had been so, so badly beaten that he actually died from his injuries later on that night. So supposedly his spirit is said to kind of roam around in the area and in the hallways where he was in real life when he was living leading up to his death. So supposedly he still kind of roams those areas, um, possibly reliving it or maybe just kind of lost and just lingering around there. I would be interested to know if he's still there, if maybe people have experienced his spirit 
now, you know, now that the place has been completely renovated. I'd be really interested to know that. So guys, that's the end of this video. This one's very short. Most of my videos this week are probably gonna be kind of short because there's, there's a lot of places around here that are haunted, but some of them don't have as much information. But I will try to give you guys as much as I can in all of these. I hope you find it interesting, and I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you tomorrow in the next video. Bye.